We begin with the latest on a story we reported on extensively last evening. A senior team from the Center for the Investigation of Sexual Offenses and Child Abuse, Sisoka, will partner with other high-level personnel to investigate the rape of five females ages 8, 14, 16, 23, and 28 in Irwin Point, St. James, Monday night. National Security Minister Peter Bunting is also promising additional security personnel for St. James to strengthen their presence in communities that are threatened by sexual predators. Keneal Gale went to Irwin Point today where he heard from some of the females who were attacked. Residents from the small rural community of Irwin Point, still shocked by the gruesome act which happened in these bushes Monday night, gathered to console each other. What they did on Monday night, they go to the back of the house where one of the bedroom was and the girl must have been on her bed and they grab her by push away, force the window open and push, put their hand in and grab her here and put the gun to her head and tell her, don't move. If anybody in the house moved to call the police or anything, they were going to blow her head off. So what they did, they panic. They open the grill, go and open the grill and let the other perpetrator in. The five females were dragged from their house nearby to this vacant lot where they were savagely raped. Sources say the men started with the teenagers, then moved on to the adults, and then finally the eight-year-old. Based on information received, it appears there were two rape scenes, the house and nearby bushes. After the men left, traumatized, scared and in pain, the five females spent what seemed like hours huddled in a room in the house, comforting each other, waiting until it was safe to go outside. They then sought refuge at a neighbor's house. Three o'clock at night I was woken up by these ladies pressing on my doorbell and at first you think it's all uh, a joke, you know, but then when I realized who they were, I said, what is it? And when they told me what had happened, well, that woke me up out of my sleep totally, because especially when they said the children as well. But so I just jumped around and started phoning the police. The silence of the laid back community was shattered. They, they were crying and shaking, but and I was afraid to let them through the gate because I didn't know if somebody was behind the wall with them. But I still had to do something and at least call the, the services, you know. But what I wanted, especially knowing that the young child was, was bleeding, don't know how badly she was bleeding, was for them to, the services, to get somebody up here, ambulance or some medical team. We don't have. It's so frustrating. It appears the men had been watching the women for a long time. It looks as if the, 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 the perpetrator had been stalking them for a long time. Because from what they told the girls, that we've been watching you, we were on your house stop last night, we know what time the father, caught the man come in the house, and we were waiting to put five bullets in his head last night, and things like that. So they have been stalking the girls, and they know everything about the house. Even as they remain incensed and shocked about the incident, residents are terrified that another attack could happen soon. I am very traumatized. Um, it is sad, it is sickening, the whole thing, um, it's crippling. We are in fear. I had to send away my seven-year-old child. The little girl that was, the, the eight-year-old that was affected, my daughter knows her. She's a little play friend when they meet up and she's totally traumatized by it. I, don't, I didn't tell her, but she heard about the incident and she's just crying. I have to send her out of the area. We are living in fear. Meanwhile, the Granville police, who were among the first responders, say the incident has cut members deeply. I visited, we visited with the a relative about two hours before you came here this morning and one of my police officers that was on patrol with me actually broke down when we saw the, the relative sitting on the step as if he's lost. Um, you know, we came here to comfort him and reassure him because we understand we have children. Sergeant Terrell says the investigators will be going all out to catch those responsible. And I can tell Jamaica this is not going to go down with the normal level of investigation because already investigations have been intensified. We are going to bring these men to justice. 
In the meantime, CVM News was the only team granted access to the teenagers today. They told us that they are trying to be strong for each other, and they appreciate the support being given to them by all of Jamaica. On the other hand, the 8-year-old remains in hospital with her mother, who was also raped during the ordeal, by her side. Sources told the CVM News that the child is in stable condition, but her reproductive system has been severely damaged. Kanil Gale, CVM News.